To the extent there is political bias or slant in the media, well, what drives that? We're going to look at some results from a very good paper by Mott Genskow and Jesse Shapiro, available online. One of the breakthroughs in this paper is that the authors have come up with a way to measure the political orientation of a media outlet. What they do is they take the phrases of congressmen by searching through the 2005 congressional record. These are from what the congressman said. And then by using search techniques, they find out which phrases are used more frequently by one party rather than the other. For instance, when it comes to the inheritance tax, the Republicans tend to call it a death tax. The Democrats tend to call it an estate tax. And this shows up in congressional speech. If it, when it comes to the war in Iraq, Republicans used to call it the war on terror, and Democrats would call it the war in Iraq. So given those correlations, what the authors then do is they search newspapers for those phrases, and the newspapers which use the phrases of Republican congressmen a lot are considered relatively to the right, and newspapers which use the phrases of Democratic congressmen a lot are considered relatively to the left. So to sum that up, we are matching the phrases in newspapers with the speeches of either Democrats or Republicans. Once we can classify newspapers in this way, then we have a method for generating some empirical results. One main finding is that the language of a typical newspaper is actually pretty close to a left-leaning member of Congress, more specifically a congressional member from a district which votes at about 47% Republican. And note, this is all from the sample period, year 2000 to 2005. In any case, you can take this as some evidence that a typical newspaper does somewhat lean to the left. That said, this political slant is actually quite close to the profit-maximizing point for the newspaper. This is because the readers of newspapers are not typical, and for instance, readers of newspapers are more likely to be found in left-leaning areas than in right-leaning areas. Another way to put it is to note that within a given area, a reader of a newspaper is somewhat more likely to lean to the left. It's very important. This paper does not prove that the political slant of newspapers is due to profit maximization. What it does show is that we cannot reject the hypothesis that it could be due to profit maximization. The research also shows that ownership of the newspaper, who owns it, it doesn't matter much for predicting the political slant of that newspaper. For instance, the same owner very often will run newspapers of different political slants. To some extent, we do find common slants of co-owned papers, papers owned by the same family or same corporation, but most of that seems to stem from proximity, that is, co-owned papers tend to be in the same region, and when you adjust for that proximity, most of that effect goes away. Under one specification, well, maybe ownership, who owns the paper, predicts about 2% of the paper's slant. Of course, that's really not that much. This further evidence for the possibility that, to the extent we do find some political slant in the news, maybe it's driven by what readers want to hear. Another way to examine the question of whether ownership matters is to look at changes in newspaper ownership. For instance, there was a case where the owner of the Chicago Tribune bought the company which was the owner of the LA Times, and then you can see whether the papers adjust their political orientation. There are not so many data points on this question in this research paper, but overall the authors find a small or zero effect. Furthermore, overall there is no difference in the amount of catering to reader preferences whether we look at publicly held firms or privately held firms. If you think ownership really matters, you might think a privately held newspaper controlled by a family could twist the paper to its political views, but a publicly held corporation would have to satisfy the preferences of the shareholders for profit maximization. Well, maybe that's the case, but when you see there's no difference between the publicly and privately held firms, that again is at least consistent with the view that they are both slanting the newspaper to maximize profit. For yet further evidence that this whole effect is not about ownership, the authors find that the slant of a newspaper is unrelated to the political contributions of the owners of the paper or also to the political contributions of the top managers of that paper. This again suggests that whatever slant we may find, it may well come from what readers are demanding.
some possible conclusions from this paper. First, don't rule out the assumption of profit maximization for newspapers. If you do see some political slant, it may well be coming from the readers and not from the owners. Second, and quite generally, newspapers respond to incentives, and you can think of this paper as providing some evidence for a relatively passive view of what newspapers are about or what they're up to. They're businesses, they're trying to earn money. Finally, at the end of the paper, the authors just mentioned briefly another possibility, and that is that ownership diversification actually may not be needed for ideological diversification of the news. Ownership diversification is often a regulatory issue, but if any possible slant of the news is mostly driven by what readers want, then who owns the newspapers or how many owners there are, it may not actually be that important. To follow up on the main paper, again, here's the reference. It's the same as from an early slide, and there's also a very good survey article by the same two researchers called Competition and Truth in the Market for News, and both are available online.